In an ideal world where patients have more or less a full complement of teeth, the best place and the easiest place to place your IV loops is in the vicinity of the first and second bicuspids. However, this is not always possible due to the fact that patients may have dental work on these teeth that prevent the use of IV loops in them due to concern of frailty of the teeth or potential damage to the restorations. Also, patients may be missing uh, teeth in the areas that you would like to utilize for IV loops. This forces us to go to alternative sites. But given the opportunity, I will always place my IV loops on the first and second bicuspids. If I'm presented with a situation like this where the patient is missing the second bicuspid on the maxillary teeth, what I would use as an alternative site is I would likely use the bicuspid and the cuspid tooth and in the lower here I would use the two lower bicuspids. The IV loops will still work in this scenario. If the patient is missing several teeth and just has solitary molar occluding against molar, you may want to consider using a single loop around each one of these teeth to obtain your fixation. Another rule that we generally follow is that we try never to place IV loops across a line of fracture. So in the case of a patient who might have a fracture of their mandible between the first and second bicuspids, you would try to avoid placing the IV loops here. You may want to go to an alternative site. Or you may need to go to an alternative method of fixation to avoid uh, stressing the fracture site itself or the teeth adjacent to the fracture site. The choice of where to place the IV loops, however, requires a certain amount of clinical judgment, and if you ever have a question, you should always consult with your attending. This is the standard tray that I use for application of IV loops. Starting here, we have a dental explorer, a wire cutter, a gauze director, a mosquito hemostat, two wire twisters, a Bard Parker handle with a measurement scale on it, a sweetheart tongue retractor, two Minnesota retractors, two bite blocks, preferably child size, and 26 gauge wire, as well as a syringe for local anesthesia administration, prefabricated IV loops so that you don't spend any time during the procedure fabricating loops, and of course dental suction. To form an IV loop, the first thing that you do is you take a piece of 26 gauge stainless steel wire and cut a length of it of approximately 20 millimeters, being careful to always hold the loose end of the wire as you're cutting it so it does not fly into the patient's face. To form the initial IV loop, have an assistant grab an explorer and take your length of wire that you just cut and bend it in two over the explorer, then give it two one-half turn clockwise turns. Once you've made your initial loop, take the loop part and grab it with a wire twister at one end, then take the other end of the ponytail, give it another one clockwise turn to tighten down the twist. To place an IV loop, the first step is to pass the wires between two teeth. Typically, I like to choose the first and second bicuspids as the initial starting point. So the wires pass through from the buckle to the lingual side. And then, one wire is passed mesially between the first bicuspid and the cuspid, and the other wire is passed distally between the second bicuspid and first molar teeth. Once you've done this, the ends of the wires are pulled until the loop itself almost passes into the embrasure but you should stop short of passing the loop into the embrasure. The distal wire is passed through the loop that you created and both wire wires are pulled tight, taking out any slack. So now that we've taken the slack out of the wires and the distal wire is passed through the loop that we created earlier, we can now 
tighten down the ivy loop. To tighten down the ivy loop, we grab each end with wire twisters and we give them an initial two turns. Then you can let go and grab the twist that you created in the center and while pulling with the wire twister, turn it clockwise until the twist goes all the way down to the bicuspid tooth. Once you've tightened the wire, then take your wire cutter while holding the free end of the wire and snip off the excess wire leaving a ponytail of about one centimeter in length. You may want to consider, once you've done this, tightening the wire a little bit more because stainless steel wires tend to stretch and they can loosen over time, so you may want to give it an additional two or three turns. Once you finish tightening down your wire, you want to uh, position it so that it does not cause irritation to the cheeks. So what we do is we take the wire, we grab it with a wire twister, bend it down to the gingiva, and give it a sharp 180 degree turn. such as that. Once you have your IV loops in place, it's now time to apply intermaxillary fixation to the patient. To do this, we will place another wire through the loops themselves and then tighten it down to place the patient into centric occlusion. Take another length of 26 gauge stainless steel wire and cut a piece approximately 15 centimeters long. Then, Using a hemostat, place a very, very sharp J curve at the, end, at the end of the wire, such as this. If you'd like, you can do this at both ends of the wire. So the wire ends up looking like this. After you've made your J turn in the wire, use it as a hook to engage the loop and pass it through the loop. Then approaching from the other side, take the other J and pass it through the ivy loop in the opposing arch. Pulling that through. So you end up with a situation where the wire is now passing between the upper and the lower ivy loops and it's ready to now be tightened down. Once you have your inter-arch wire in place, you can start the twist, try and place the braid at about the level of the plane of occlusion. You can try, you can place two or three initial turns into the wire. Then grabbing it in the center and applying the pulling force Turn the wire again in a clockwise direction. Once you feel that it's tight, cut the wire. And cinch it down. Thank you.